Oh, no, do not buy a house in this year, 2024. I think that there's not going to be a crash. I don't want to do any clickbaits like a lot of people do in YouTube. I'm not like that, but I'm going to give you the facts and I'm going to give you and I'm going to share articles that I have just come across that I think are extremely important for anyone out there who's desperately seeking to buy a house. I don't think that 2024 is the right year, maybe next year especially towards 2026. But right now, I'm going to share an important article that I think really is going to be valuable to your time. So let's go ahead and dive in right now. And it's called over here. Uh, it's called There's a Shift Happening in Some Housing Market. Just look at the inventory. So if you look at my screen as I'm sharing right here, look at the inventory right now happening in the United States. We know it's been very hot. We know that. I don't need to tell you that. You've probably been aware. You've been listening to the news and so on and social media. And everybody's predicting, oh, there's going to be a crash. There's going to be a crash. What I do know, since I'm a little bit of more of a, an age, I do recall way back, yes, in 2006, all the way into 2008, how everything went like a bubble. And I kept saying this and people looked at me like I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, my background is in finance and I've done a lot of accounting work. I have helped many real estate investors. So I am very familiar to how the cycles of real estate works. This is my second time around. And I kept telling people, be patient, be patient because the time will come. It's a cycle, folks. What goes up? must come down. It's always a balance. It cycles out. The only time why this has been such a long, long tail, you know, of upwards in pricing, it's because we had all this cheap money, right, with low interest. That's the reason behind it. This probably would have probably, I would say, burst or at least corrected in pricing probably since 22. So we're way behind this. There's no more. It's unaffordable. Families cannot even buy their own single family house. Why are they called single family homes? Because it was meant for families. It was not truly for investors. Don't get me wrong. I worked, like I said, with other investors, and I think it's great that they actually put their money, right, uh, to make a profit out of it. But the truth is that families like you, you also deserve to have a roof over your head. And I think right now it's just not right what's happening, you know, hey, you know, we had a lot of hedge funds coming in, right? Buying and buying because it was cheap money. There you go. And now they're in the sideline, by the way. The problem right now is not the hedge funds. What we need now is the correction is already happening. So anyhow, let me go ahead and show you here in the map. And you can go ahead. Also, I'm going to share the article uh, in the description box if you decide to look at this. This just came out recently. Uh, this is the middle of 2024 that I'm recording this. And I just wanted to share this right away. I haven't done any updates about real estate in a very long time. So I do apologize for those of you who are my subscribers. And honestly, I thank you and appreciate you because you've been following. And if you're not, then please like, share, and comment. And yes, it makes a big difference for me to continue putting this valuable information as a free content for everyone. Um, so, and I know all of you are very, you know, short on time. So I, I take it my time to do this because I think we need to know the real thing of what's happening. There's no crash, not yet. Okay, but definitely corrections here. So let me show you here. Look at this map right now. And this, by the way, before I forget, it's fastcompany.com. Okay, that's the the website's um, uh, uh, URL. So look at what it says. When assessing home prices, momentum, it's important to monitor active listing, which is true, in months of supply. If active listings start to increase rapidly as home remains on the market for longer periods, which is already what we've been seeing, a lot of prices, especially here, I'm in the home state of Florida. That's my state. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're one of those big states that we just go, oof, up in the cycle of skyrocket prices. Uh, I know some other states like Texas, they've been seeing the same thing. Uh, we saw Arizona going through the same situation. Um, Idaho was another big state that was going. So, I mean, there's just been a lot of states that did, they really triple almost their, their, their actually sale price of a home, okay? But I do know that it's been standing here in Florida much longer. I mean, where houses used to get, I mean, they were like, hot commodity. I mean, something like you could go in and somebody could just 
put it in the MLS, and within less than three days, they will sell property. That's how hot it was here in Florida. And I'm sure I heard the same thing, and I read a lot about Texas. It was the same thing. You had it for, I think it was three days, five days, and it was gone. I mean, you will have a line of potential buyers out there hungry, hungry for your property. And I think really all this comes from, we know that from, from the pandemic, you know, I think people getting stuck in the house in 2020, and then as soon as they had the freedom to go out and, and, and be able to get out and, 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 and obviously, you know, jobs that created the, the you know, work from home, uh, create this big explosion. That's really what it came down to, if you think about it. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of, uh, I think a lot of dreaming and hoping, you know, this is wonderful, I can work from home. And now, as we've seen in the last two years, uh, employers are, you know, they're keeping, you know, requesting people to come back to their to the home office. Um, and a lot of people move around from state to state thinking that that was going to be like a permanent thing. You know, oh, I used to work in the office. Now I can work from home. Obviously, we know that that has been changing drastically. Another thing that we need to look at, let's not forget what's happening with, uh, uh, you know, the unemployment. Yeah, we look at the numbers and it says we under 4%. I don't think it's true. We, we, there's a lot of things they don't take into account. We have the unemployment. There's certain codes that you have to look at. What we share through the government status, they only share people who are actually unemployed, but not the people who are part-timers, not the people who stop looking for a job. And therefore, the number that is shared among consumers and the rest of the citizens, it's not a realistic number. It really isn't. And I might do a separate, uh, you know, uh, video for that. But I, I think you can look up the unemployment. It's called the U6, if I'm not mistaken. That really shows you the full percentage of how much it is. And I can tell you right now, it's not 4% or less than that. It's probably much higher than, I would say, probably 12% at this point. There's a lot of people who have been unemployed. But let's go back into this. And this is obviously related to what the situation was happening with the market. Because not only the properties are staying way longer uh, on the MLS, um, but just some sellers. And I'm going to tell you, like I said, don't buy, don't sell. I mean, it's just being realistic. If you really do have to sell, then yeah, unfortunately, you're going to be to be a lot more reasonable with your price. This is not the hot years, you know. So being realistic and being able to sell, that's what matters. And that's how you want to move your property. It's going to be the best way. As you know now, you know, in, uh, commissions are negotiable. So you have an option there where hopefully you can reduce your price and then, you know, try to do a quick sell. Because if you think you're going to sell at the high peak of 21, 22, even last year, it's not going to happen. I'm just telling you right now. And again, I base it in experience and charts and, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, documents and articles that I read. And uh, I'm very active in the real estate industry. Uh, you know, I go to my local, uh, you know, Jack's Ria, and I go to a lot of other, you know, online courses and training and webinars that I do with a lot more, much more professional. And I would say experienced investors out there than I am. And I think that I'm listening to the right source. And I think that's important, right? So there is, the market is taking longer. There's no date. I mean, even here it says, generally speaking, housing markets where active inventory has returned to pre-pandemic levels have experienced weak home price growth in the last in the past 24 months. And if you look here, look, this is very, very interesting. I want to share with you. It says, we're starting to see the numbers of national active active listing rise up to 36.7%. That's almost a 37% from June of last year of 23 to June of 2024. It says higher, but we still see below pre-pandemic. So what does that mean? That even though we have, you know, increased, right? The listings in the MLS, it's almost a 37%. We're still low from 2019. And look at this chart, which I wanted to share with you. It says active U.S. housing inventory for sale, according to Realtor.com. If you look at these lines, look at look at 2019 when we got started here. I'm circling here. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Um, in Look at what's happening in 2024. Look at this. 2024, right here. 2024. Um, I mean, folks, I mean, 
it's it's really not not nothing to to lie. I mean, the charts are showing, and I mean, what better than realtor or even Zillow that really are keeping track of what's happening in the real estate market? And I mean, we're looking at the increases, and here's a breakdown which I really enjoy, uh, uh, you know, going over because it said, look what it says: in June of 2017, there was one million two hundred ninety-two thousand homes for sale. That's 2017. Look at the number in 2018. It was 1,216,000. In 2019, it's starting, it goes up a little bit by 1,219,000. But look what happens right smack in the pandemic. Look at that number. It drops to 871. That was the overheating, okay, during the pandemic, uh, you know, housing boom. And that's exactly why. Look what happens in 21 when the market was so extremely hot across the United States. I know small towns that people were selling for like 30, 40%. They would, a seller who had never dreamed to sell at that price at any other given time. Okay, so some of your sellers were really greedy. I hate to tell you that, but you were greedy. You took advantage and you squeezed those buyers. Now, remember, I always believe that, you know, we're all here to make money and that's perfectly acceptable. But as long as we just don't, try to take advantage of the market. And a lot of you did. I hate to say it, but you did. Um, the problem is that a lot of you who did sell and made a lot of money, you ended up spending a lot of money on your next property, okay? Because now you have to pay more insurance. You have to pay more property taxes. So hmm, did you really gain? Not sure. That's something that you need to decide. But look at this, June 21. Look at the drop, 492. It's crazy. From 871 in 2020, all the drop to 492. Look at 2022. It's starting to increase 573. Okay, that's when we start getting what? The rates. The rates started in 2023. Look what happens in early spring of 2023 when finally the Fed decides that, hey, we need to correct this inflation that we're having, which is outrageous. I mean, we have had what food and gas and everything all across you know, over 20 to 30%. But no, the government tells us, oh, no, don't worry. We only had barely a 5% increase. Or what is it, a 3%? I don't know. I really, at this point, I don't know what to believe, but well, you could be the judge of that. So look at this, June 24. Okay, this is past where I'm recording right here. It's in the summer 24. Look at this numbers from 614,000 to 839,000. Do you think what the prediction is going to be for 2025? Look at this number. Up in the million. Up in the million. In 2026, back to the pre-pandemic. So I think that if you're in the market, let me show you the next map. I want to be quick. I don't want to make a long video out of this, but I wanted to bring up really important points because I know this buyers, they're desperate to to really, you know, acquire the first property or maybe your second property, whatever might be the situation. Others, they did regret selling, like I said, because they realized that, yeah, I made a lot of money, but, mm, you know, now I cannot buy the future home that I wanted. Be patient. I think it's the right time coming. I know it's easier said than done. Like I said, this is the second round of real estate cycle that I've been through. Uh, I remember back in my time, I remember when people tell me you're crazy. There's no way, Liz, that they're going to be able to, you know, the prices are going to reduce. I mean, I saw the same scenario. I've been living here in Florida for more than 20 years. So I, I can attest to that. And I can tell you that uh, I saw such a decline. Yes, it was a crash, but I think the correction it's going to be really, really big. And when I mean big, no, I don't have a crystal ball. Of course I don't. But you know what I do is that I do plenty of research. And I look at vital information because I want to share it with you. And I know most of the people out there, they're busy working full-time jobs and taking care of families and so on. And now that I'm not busy, obviously I, 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 I'm also busy running my business. But I want to prove to you what's really happening and hopefully you know you can determine what's going to be better for you but right now look at this map this map is really important it says one year change in the housing inventory for sale shift between june of 23 to june of 2024 when i highlight this map i really like this map by the way that's why i share again it's fastcompany.com if you want to go and check it out and by the way looking at the top i don't know if this one does show but i think it does have 
uh, gonna hear this. If you click here, it says view an interactive version of the map below, okay? Um, but look at this thing right here. If you go to Florida, like where I'm at, look what it's saying, Florida, right now, one year, one year change, okay, from 23 to 24, we have seen an increase of 71%. 71% in Florida. Yes, it's true that the majority, the biggest inventory from Florida has really come from, from the coast right here on the left side of the Gulf of Mexico, right? And obviously, why did that happen? Well, uh, if you might recall, unfortunately, they did have a hurricane uh, in that side. And, you know, uh, we have Cape Coral, we had, you know, Naples. I mean, uh, we had all the way to, oh my God, close to Tampa. All that area got really affected because of the hurricane that we have. I don't remember it right now, but there was a lot of devastation happening there. And that's the price to live in Florida. Florida is not a paradise, folks. You know, everybody, I remember, you know, they were running, coming here, moving to Florida and Texas too because of the weather and because of the condition and what happened was you guys skyrocket our prices and now you realize well it's not such a paradise like i thought and there's been a lot of regret a lot a lot of regret i'm sure you can look up that information uh and you can that way attest that what i'm seeing is it's just the correct information and, and it's and i'm right about that um not that i don't make mistakes but you know but the fact is that look at an increase of 71 percent that's huge, okay? And like I said, that's in the West, what we call the West Coast of Florida, the peninsula, right? Now, other sites like Miami, Miami's still very hot. Miami is Miami. It's not going to change. It's the number one main city in Florida. So if you want to live in Miami, you're always going to have to pay a high price. Now, do I see some corrections in Miami in the Dade County? Yeah, I probably do. I would say probably maybe 10% or so. Um, there's been some corrections already, and there's been some increase in inventory, but nothing compared to the West Coast, okay? And I mean, you can see this. Right now, the home sales for 2019 was like 139,000 properties. Now they have in June 2024, they have 140,000. We're back to the regular numbers. So, I mean, does it look at Texas? Texas, you have right now a 42% increase in inventory. Okay. I'm even actually surprised, even here, Arizona, that was another hot market. People were moving from California. So I know some of you live in there and right there you have a year change of 53, almost 54% of increase of inventory, okay? Look at another big state that I was really surprised. That was Colorado. of almost a 44.8%, almost a 45%. Let's look at what other states we have really big here, okay? Montana, Montana, I mean, decrease, it has been a decrease, I'm sorry, of almost 34.8%. So you were looking at this, even look, the, even California, 41%. So, I mean, you know, as we look at these numbers, I mean, the shift is happening. It's not a matter of when it's already happening. So when I'm telling buyers, I tell you, hey, be patient, wait around. Something good is going to come out of this. I mean, sellers are going to be a little more realistic. The same I tell sellers, maybe you want to wait too. Because if the if finally, if interest do go down, again, I don't have no crystal ball, but if interest do go down, which I do believe they are going to go down, especially before hmm, election, you know what I mean? Then in that case, I think that maybe we're lucky, maybe a quarter or maybe a half. I don't think it's going to be more than that. I could be very wrong, but... I mean, we do need interest to stay almost at where they're at. And I hate to say even probably higher to make the correction in our, in, in actually our, in, in inflation. Things are out of control. Again, with food prices, uh, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, people could shop for 10 days in, in food for $100. And now it's costing you $150, $160. It's just outrageous. It's it's unsustainable. Not only the the rent, but also the property prices, also the food, also the gas prices. And what about the insurance? That's a separate video I'm gonna do about because insurance in any state, especially like this, like Florida, has been outrageous, especially for condos. Uh, you know, elderly people who are in a fixed income, they cannot even barely afford. Um, they probably bought their little condos, you know, in cash. Hopefully they did. And, and 
Some still have a mortgage. And guess what? Between insurance and property taxes, they, they have, they're forced to sell. That's not right. That's not right. It really isn't. Uh, you know, we want our, you know, baby boomers and uh, what we call a silent, you know, generation to enjoy whatever years they have remaining. They shouldn't be suffering and having to sell a condo that was their dream to come to Florida and, and retire here. And now this is becoming almost like impossible to do. It's like, a, it's not, a, it's just not feasible for them. It's just quite sad. But anyhow, I wanted to see, as you can see, it says here, again, the biggest inventory is in Florida, as I was, as I was mentioned, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. Uh, that's exactly where the hurricane came, came through, through. September, there it is, when that Ian, Ian, the hurricane Ian, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then here is the result of a spike home prices, spike mortgage rates, higher insurance premiums, and higher HOAs. I'm telling you, these people cannot afford. These retired folks cannot retire. I mean, I'm sorry, they cannot afford their condos anymore. Imagine, picture yourself. I have spoken to quite a few of them that they would pay maybe uh, an average condo. I'm not talking about, you know, an oceanfront, by all means. I'm talking about a modest condo in a decent area, in a nice city, even in South Florida, because, you know, I was, I was from there and I used to have my condo there. And I, yes, I sold it. Uh, you know, during 2021, I think it was. Um, and no, I didn't make that much money. I had to pay a lot of commissions, you know, talk about that. And, and a lot of other assessments they were already hitting me with, even back then. Um, but yes, I still made uh, decent money. But either way, I mean, what I'm saying to the point is that these folks who are in fixed income, they cannot even afford it. Imagine having a $300 monthly HOA going up to like six, six and seven hundred dollars. Um, the big question is that your social security check went up that high? Yeah, I don't think so. So 